Good evening. Isaiah, chapter 60. <coughs> Forgive me for my cough and everything. We're going to see a wonderful chapter here about the millennium. Arise. Second Advent. Shine. For thy light, that's the Lord Jesus Christ, is come. Jesus Christ. And the glory of the Lord is risen upon thee. So when Stephen sees Jesus at his dying, he says, I see St uh, Jesus standing. One day, two events that Jesus is going to stand up. He's going to stand up for the rapture of the church. He's going to stand up, get on his horse, and come back to second advent and deliver and redeem the nation of Israel. For behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. End of the tribulation period. There is no light at all. A gross darkness like you found in Exodus. <coughs> the people, but the Lord, shall arise upon thee. Second advent. At the end of the tribulation, his glory shall be seen upon thee. The Gentiles shall come to thy light. That light Jesus. And kings to the brightness of thy rising. And I ask you to forgive me. My... Lift up thy eyes round about. And see. All they gather themselves together. They come to thee. Israel. Thy son shall come from far. Thy daughter shall nurse at thy side. It's a regathering of the nation of Israel. I mean, they've been scattered in the tribulation period. The Antichrist is, 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 is scattered them. And there's a place Jesus said prepared for them. Thou shalt see and flow together. Thy heart shall fear God. <clears throat> Please forgive me. And enlarge because the abundance of the sea shall be covered unto thee. And the forces of the Gentiles shall come upon thee. A multitude of camels shall cover thee. The dromedary, that's quick camels, of Midian and Ephah, all from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and incense. They shall show forth the praise of the Lord. This is all the millennium. All the flocks of Kedar shall be gathered together unto thee. The rams of <coughs> Neboeth, rams are a part of the sacrifice, shall minister unto thee. They shall come up with acceptance on, the, on my altar. You find that in Ezekiel. That's a brazen altar in the millennium. And I will glorify the house of my glory. That's the only place that shows up, the house of my glory. That's the temple. That's the temple Ezekiel describes. Don't you dare put your, your church name on that. Don't you dare claim that as a Christian. Who are these that fly as a cloud? Uh-oh, there's that cloud. As doves to their windows. Type of the Holy Spirit. Surely the isle shall wait for me. God, the shifts of Tarshish first to bring thy sons from afar. Here comes Israel, they're coming back. Their silver, their gold, them unto the name of the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, because he has glorified thee. Now, notice it says their silver, their gold. When they came out of Egypt, all the materials that came out of Egypt, God said, borrowed. Why did God say borrow? Because later on when Israel sinned, it, Egypt came back and took back what, it, what Israel got. Now it says there. It's there. They own it. Ain't no way you're going to come back and take it. Thy sons of strangers shall build up thy walls, the city. There's a wall building. 
I mean, did Donald Trump try to be a, be an antichrist and build his walls? I don't know. And their king shall minister unto thee. For my wrath I smoke thee. Tribulation. But in my favor have I had mercy on thee. I mean, there are Jews that came out of the tribulation now in going in their promised land. And there are people say God's all finished with the Jew. No, he's not. Therefore thy gates. So Jerusalem's going to have walls and gates. Shall be open continually. Listen, even Ezra and Nehemiah, they shut those gates. They shall not be shut day or night. 24-7. That men may bring unto thee the forces of the Gentiles. Here comes the Gentiles. The Gentiles are in the millennium too. That their kings may be brought. Tribulation. I mean, uh, second advent, excuse me. For the nation and kingdom that will not serve thee shall perish. Yea, those nations shall be utterly wasted. Those are their goat nations. And then at the end of the millennium, when Satan gathers up an army, thy, the glory of Lebanon shall come unto thee, the fir tree, the pine tree, the box tree, to beautify the place of my sanctuary. That's the temple. And I will make the place of my feet glorious. But the sons also of them that afflicted thee shall come up bending unto thee. All oh, my notes I can't read. All they that despise thee shall bow themselves down at the soles of thy feet. And they shall call thee. This is the nation of Israel. They shall call thee the city of the Lord. How's that? That ain't today. Oh yeah, I know Christians call it the holy city. The holy city, I heard today, they were, they were launching rockets into the holy city. I know if you go to the holy city today, there's a dumb of the rock. That ain't holy. There ain't nothing holy about the Muslims. The Arabians, the Roman Catholics running around there. When Jesus Christ comes back, you ain't going to have no Roman Catholic priests or none. Zion of the Holy One of Israel. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, tribulation, so that no man went through thee. He didn't want to have anything to do with the Jews. But there are nations who will, we learn. Pardon me. I will make the eternal excellently a joy of many generations. Does that sound like God's all finished with them? And look at the end of verse 14. Israel. <clears throat> In order to say that God's all finished with, the, with the Israel, you've got to erase the Bible. And maybe those that say that God's all, maybe they have a problem with eternal security. Because Israel has eternal security. The Christian has eternal security. I want to read 15 again. Whereas thou hast been forsaken and hated, so that no man went through thee, I will make thee an eternal, eternal excellency. A joy for many generations. Thou shalt suck the milk of the Gentiles. Thou shalt suck the breast of kings. Nourishment. That's the most healthiest thing for a baby. Mother's milk. Being on the breast. 
Thou shalt know that I, the Lord, and thy Savior, capital S, that's Jesus, and Redeemer, capital R, that's Jesus. And you see a wonderful story of that in the book of Ruth. The mighty one of Jacob, Israel, not Gentile. For brass, I will bring gold. Brass really no value, but gold has value. And the wood, brass. Wait a minute. And for iron, I will bring silver. It's better value than what the value is. And for wood, brass. For stones, iron. I will also make thy officers peace. And thy exactors righteous. In other words, the value in the millennium is going to double. Going to double. Violence shall no more be heard in thy land. Right now, I said right now, today, they're launching missiles. Or yesterday. I seen a picture last week. You know, a, a couple walking in the streets of Jerusalem. One of them was carrying an AK-7. There's violence all around the world today. It's going to end. It's not going to end with Republicans and Democrats. It's going to end with Jesus Christ. Your church ain't going to bring in the end of violence. Your programs ain't going to bring the end of violence. I mean, they keep saying guns, guns don't kill. Well, what the heck are these people getting killed by? I don't hear axe, knives. The gun was made for the sole purpose of killing. An axe was made for cutting trees. A knife was, was made for, for cutting. <clears throat> Hate me. I don't care. Wasting nor destruction within thy border. Wasting is just, you know, it's utter loss. There's going to be no more utter loss. There's going to be no more destruction. There's going to be no houses being bombed out. Probably no houses being destroyed by fire or weather. Be no Job is a per perfect story of a wasting. He lost everything. That's a wasting. But thou shalt call the walls salvation. You ain't going to do that right now. And thy gates peace. You ain't going to do that today. Peace. Like I said, they're launching missiles. Hamas is launching missiles into Israel. This is all future. The sun shall be no more thy light by day. Ezekiel 48. But there will be a sun, but you don't need it. This is also New Jerusalem. Need it for brightness shall the moon give light unto thee. <clears throat> That's New Jerusalem. Uh, but the Lord shall be unto thee an everlasting light, and thy God, thy glory. That's New Jerusalem. That's the eternal city to come. The new heavens, the new earth, and New Jerusalem. You ain't going to lay half naked or naked in front of the Baal. You're not going to have, you know, Baal rise services. You know, I know it's a lot of churches. I've been in, and I've been in a lot of churches. I've been a member of a lot of churches. I've been a visitor of a lot of churches. It's funny how even the Baptist churches, that when the congregation looks at the pastor at the pulpit and had their Sunday morning service, that's the sun coming up in the east. Go to your church and check it out. And did you read, I believe it's Jeremiah or Ezekiel, which one? Jeremiah, where it says, God said that sunrise service was terrible. And they were at the temple. Read it, Jeremiah. And you got to be out by noon for all the cars turn to pumpkins or something.
forgot where I was. But the Lord shall be the everlasting light, the God of thy glory. The sun shall no more go down. Where is it going to be? The earth is a circle, though some people don't believe that. Neither shall thy moon withdraw itself. The moon's always going to be out. With the light of God. For the Lord shall be thy everlasting light. And in the beginning, God created the heavens and earth. It was dark. God said, let there be light. That was Jesus Christ. John chapter 1. Jesus says, I'm the light of the world. Here he is. The light of the world. Son, compared to Jesus, the sun's going to be a one watt light bulb, and Jesus a, a billion watt. I don't know what it means the sun will no more go down in the moon. It's going to be quite interesting. And the days of thy mourning shall be end. No more sadness, no more tears. That ain't today. You realize those missiles, if they landed in, in areas, there are people now mourning for the death. They, be, they may be mourning for the wasting of their house or business. Not in the millennium. Not in the after eternal life of the new heavens, new earth, and new Jerusalem. Thy people, Israel, also shall be all righteous. God's all finished with the Jews. Is he? Now they're not all righteous today. There are Jews are going to go to hell. There are Jews that died and will die and will go to hell. In the millennium and the eternal life, those Jews will be righteous. They shall inherit the land forever. There's their heaven. There it is. That's what the Jews want. And God's going to give it to them, all of it. The United Nations, they don't have nothing to say. <coughs> the President of the United States has nothing to say. The Roman Catholic Church will have nothing to say. The Arabians will have nothing to say. The PLO will have nothing to say. Hamas will have nothing to say. The Muslims will have nothing to say. God said, that was your land, you take it. It's only one time they really had that whole land was there under David and Solomon. You know, Solomon was a king under peace. There was no wars while they were building that temple. And he had all the land. When you read about the, Sol yeah, Solomon sinned with the wives and all that, we all sinned. No type is 100%. But my jury the life of Solomon building that temple and everything and all the spices and, there, and the, the queen of uh, Sheba all that is a picture of Jesus Christ. They share the land forever. The branch the branch Jesus is called the branch of my planting, God's going to plant them. And you ain't going to pull them up. The work of my hand. That I may glorify. The Jews going into that land is going to make God plead. That's going to glorify God. It ain't glorifying him today. And I guarantee whatever body of people. Whether it be a president whether it be the United Nations, the Arabians, whoever, that takes that land of Israel. God's up in heaven. He's angry. To the point that God said to Abraham, the founder of the Jews, I will curse them that curse thee. Don't you dare say God's all finished with the Jew. You just 
the Jew right now is what they call the woodshed. A timeout. And then the tribulation period is when he's gonna take he's gonna take Israel over his knee and give him a butt whipping. You know the devil's called thy rod and staff in the, I always forget Psalms thirty two. I always forget what number it is. I can never remember that song. That psalm, the Lord is my shepherd, that's about Israel in the tribulation period going into the millennium. It is God using the devil to spank the hiney of Israel like God allowed the devil to spank the hiney of Job. Like how God allowed the devil to spank the hiney of Israel during Jacob, I mean David, when he counted the people. And there was that plague. And then David, what did he do? He went and purchased the title deed to that place where the, where the temple would be, where today that dumb of the rock is. That don't belong there. Your King James Bible, the Jewish Bibles, record the title deed of that piece of property, and it's not to the Muslims. And God's going to come back at the end of the tribulation period and say, It's mine. Israel, take it. <laughs> right off the hell you go. Allah's is waiting for you. Imagine a Muslim getting to hell and there's Allah. You know what Allah's name is? Satan. You know what? I could lose my head for saying what I'm saying right now. The nice peaceful religion. Yeah. Thy people also shall be all righteous. Get that. They shall inherit the land forever. Get that. The branch of my planting. God's going to plant them. The work of my hands. By God's hand. That it may be glorified. A little one shall become a thousand. Remember I told you the other day? In the millennium there's going to be no pain delivery. A woman's going to get pregnant. Nine months she's going to carry the baby. At nine months, she's going to, I mean, no pain. Here it comes. And then she's got a certain amount of days she's unclean in the law. Revelation, uh, excuse me, Leviticus 12. For a male child, for a female child. And Mary brought the sin offering, by the way. Leviticus 12. And whatever that period of time is, she's unclean, she can't be touched. Now that moment she gets clean, I'm going, I'm trying to be clean here. That moment she gets clean, she's able to, to perform the wifely marriage bed. What do you think they're going to do? And guess what do you think is going to happen? She's going to have another baby. At nine months, no pain, no sorrow, childbirth, and she's going to be unclean, Leviticus 12. And after that period of time, they're going to come together, and guess what's going to happen? They're going to have a baby. Read it. Read it. A, a little one shall become a thousand. The millennium is a thousand years. If you got a woman giving birth every year, she's got a thousand children. Read it. A woman will be able to have one baby a year. And there are a thousand years. A small one, a strong nation. What's the strong nation? There are 12 tribes. I, the Lord, will hasten it in his time. I don't see it. The Lord is very patient, God. There's a couple prayers right now I wish he would hasten. But that's that. 